It's time for Petsylvania with Dr. Bob Esplin. Dr. Bob guides you through the latest veterinary techniques and procedures to keep your pets in the best of health. Petsylvania is brought to you by Elanco, maker of Trifexis and Comfortis. With your ears up and tails wagging, here is Dr. Bob. Well, it's great to be here, and thanks, Dennis. That was a great three hours of music. I really enjoyed listening. Everybody should certainly tune you in at 9 o'clock. My tail is wagging, and my ears are up, and I'm also panting because I have been running around frantically looking for the outline of the show that I was going to do today. In my frenzy to keep my desk clean, which my staff is just astounded at that you can actually see the desktop, I think I threw it out. So we are really winging it here today. The good news is I've got a couple of questions uh, from listeners. Uh, That's always nice. And we're going to try to turn this into uh, kind of a freeform uh, Pennsylvania today. So let's start by thank uh, Alanco, the makers of Trifexis, Comfortis, and uh, Reconcile. Really high quality products. The uh, Trifexis, uh, the dual product for heartworm and flea control, and Comfortis, a flea control once a month pill. They are the next generation of, uh, of flea control uh, out there. The only difference being that we're not going to get any tick control out of the, either of these products. And so those are things that you're going to need to talk with your veterinarian about if you're concerned about ticks. But if your dog has never had a tick, probably isn't a concern if your lifestyle hasn't dramatically changed, so you may not need to worry about that. And then Reconcile is a dog tested and studied and approved Prozac for uh, behavioral problems, uh, separation anxiety being the biggest of those. What we'll do then is go on to tell you about Sylvania Vet, and I remember on my outline that I wanted to tell you about something that's truly unique to Sylvania Vet, and no one else in uh, Northwest Ohio provides this service, and that's physical rehabilitation and the use of our underwater treadmill in the hydro tub. Rehab is uh, extremely critical when it comes to post-surgical time after a cruciate ligament surgery. And boy, we have been doing a lot of those this week. I've, I have personally done four cruciates already this week, and one of my associates has done one. So five cruciates in a week. Those dogs are all going to need some rehabilitation in order to regain the strength. If you're a sports fan and you've been following what happened to RG3 from the Washington Redskins with his knee, he blew out his, uh, his uh, cruciate ligament and another of his ligaments, and they're going to do a total knee reconstruction. And I guarantee you that if he's going to come back and be anywhere near as effective as Adrian Peterson from the Minnesota Vikings, there's going to be serious rehabilitation. Well, we're not trying to get our dogs back onto the football field, uh, but we certainly want them to be able to go out and go for walks with us and run in the yard and hopefully chase a ball or frisbee. And rehab is the the key to that. Uh, Whether you've had your surgeries done at Sylvania Vet or you've had them done anywhere else in uh, in the area or at any of the referral centers, I strongly recommend you give us a call, schedule a time to come in for a rehab consult and learn about what we can do to help your dog recover. Um, We've used it on rabbits on a couple of occasions, and uh, I would have to say that uh, the rabbit did not particularly appreciate the underwater treadmill, and we've done it on a couple of cats. Do it, use the underwater treadmill a lot with arthritic dogs and dogs that are getting weak in the rear because of uh, nerve degeneration. It makes a huge difference. So there's lots of things that we can do to help you with your pet, and we'll get a consult in there. I um, actually saw a case yesterday that came in because they had found us on the internet and they thought that their feral hound could benefit from the hydrotherapy. But, you know, we don't just kind of automatically sign them up for it. We take a long history, do a complete physical. And I, I determined that this dog at this juncture probably wouldn't have benefited much from uh, uh, the hydrotherapy and it really needs to go see a neurologist. And so uh, in the process of making that referral, so then afterwards we may be able to, to lend uh, some uh, assistance to this dog. But the most important thing there is to get the diagnosis. Well, And then our third sponsor, besides uh, Lanco and Sylvania Vet, is Esplin Medical and uh, the uh, surgical scrubs that are environmentally friendly, that are uh, made of uh, 80% all-natural product, 55% bamboo, 25% cotton, and 20% recycled uh, plastic made into polyester. Because of that high content of, uh, of natural fiber, uh, the, the tops are softer, they're cooler, uh, they breathe. Bamboo is naturally and antim- microbial so it's a really 
really great product. And if you're a work in a in a hospital and you have to buy your own scrubs, or you work in a, in an office where they require you to wear scrubs, or if you just want really something really comfortable to bang around uh, in the uh, the house with, you should uh, you should consider buying a pair of Esplin Medical scrubs. And you can do that on their website at esplinmedical.com. That's E S P L I N Medical. Dot com. So those are our sponsors, and we really appreciate the support that we get from those companies. First question that we got today uh, was from Olivia. She says she likes it listening to the show, so I'll thank you, Olivia. We really appreciate that. Uh, I want to change the food I feed my dog. What is the best way to go about doing that? And the best way when you make a diet change is, first off, you need to think about, well, why am I making the change? And, and from what to what am I making the change? And, and then you never want to do it cold turkey. We sometimes do that if we're if we have a medical problem that we're dealing with. But when it's just one nutritional product to another nutritional product, I like to see it take about five six days to make the transitions. You get down towards the last week of your old diet, and you get your new diet in there, and you start introducing it. Ninety percent of the old diet, ten percent of the new diet, and then each day you work your way up so that at the end of about a week or so, we're a hundred percent of the new diet. That'll uh, get the dog used to it. It'll enable us to know that he's going to eat it and show that she's going to uh, enjoy it and be willing to consume it. And also, it's not going to upset the uh, the GI tract. I think it's a good point to make, and it isn't something Olivia asked, but if you're worried that your dog might have food allergy, all right, and so you say, well, before I get involved in a lot of office visits and spending money with Dr. Bob, maybe what I ought to do is try changing diets. Well, one of the important things that you must remember with that is, is that you must change to something totally unique. That new food must have no nutrient in it that your dog has ever consumed before. So it helps to to look back and remember what have I fed before. Just to switch from one brand name product like dog chow to some out of the pet store, maybe pro plan, that may not do it if it's still based in a beef or wheat or has egg in it or corn or any of the things, any common things, because there's no way of really knowing which one ingredient. So it's not that one food is better than another in a situation like like that one food must truly be unique and then you got to give up treats you got to give up crusts of pizza potato chips and all those things that might be coming to your dog for off the shelves uh, in your house and you got to give that trial a 12-week trial with that brand new diet and if it doesn't work then it decreases the likelihood but it's still not the end all and the beginning all now it's time to come see dr bob or one of his associates start talking about food allergy and, and a, a unique protein diet so i hope that helps you olivia i've given you more information than you even asked for one of the things that we deal with quite a bit is aggression problems. Those are really serious and I think it's important that you start with a puppy teaching it manners and using the sit command to make it earn everything it gets and discourage playing a lot of games of aggression. It used to be that I said no games of aggression, no tug of war. Well, a little bit of tug goes a long way and I think it's okay if you do some tug but you want to win. It becomes your tug toy when you're done. Let's not teach your puppy to growl but that tug game gives your dog's front teeth some exercise and that's good in the long-term health of those teeth. So we want to do a little bit of that because I think that it would re- would really be helpful. Now, what I don't really like is face slapping and, and being quick and seeing if you're quicker in your, your dog so, or allowing them to snap at you or letting them bite on you because, oh, you know, it really doesn't hurt. So if it might hurt when you're a grown-up, it's probably not a good idea to let them, them bite when, you're, uh, when they're a puppy either. It's best you deal with things in a positive way. Punishing a dog for biting is generally not going to accomplish what you what you want to accomplish. If a puppy is biting, I do feel it's okay, and some behavioralists disagree with me, but I do think it's okay to say no bite, but then you walk away and you end the interaction. They need to learn that biting, and the puppy particularly, is not acceptable. If you have an adult dog that's starting to snap and bite at family members, I encourage you to get in for a behavioral consult right away before trouble starts before a bite's reported because that's a that's really bad news well we zipped through the first part of the show today so we're going to go and take a break
And I think we'll take question that came to us uh, from the request line. So I encourage you to kind of do that. It really helps me uh, roll the show along and makes it, hopefully for you, it makes it more interesting. This is from Courtney. Uh, she says, um, she too loves listening to me. That's really nice. I have an American Bulldog and every couple of days he starts to drool a lot. And then he starts licking his front feet. We haven't changed his food or treats and we don't feed him people food. Is something wrong with him? That's the kind of thing that probably is going to take a visit so we can examine the mouth and make sure that there's no pathology in there, that there's not an ulcer or a bad tooth or a a piece of stick or something lodged somewhere in the throat. When it's happening randomly like that every couple of days, first reaction that I have is to what might be causing that is nausea. She didn't mention if ever have any vomiting associated with, but it's entirely possible that there could be a little bit of heartburn-like condition that's causing this this uh, uh, this excessive drooling. Now, the licking of the feet becomes another issue. Did the feet get you know, get wet from all the drool, and the dog is now just licking, and it's become you know necessary from his perspective of cleaning, or is it just become a uh, a habit for her uh, that she's doing? Maybe it's getting attention. So those are things that need to be. Looked looked at. If you want to try something before you come in and take a and have it examined and try to figure out what's going on, the way I would approach this is, is think about it as heartburn. And so you, you could use, a, in an American Bulldog, you could easily use a, um, a Pepsid AC chewable once or twice a day in a, maybe a tablespoon of Mylanta a couple times a day. Do that maybe for a week to 10 days and see if that doesn't take care of it. And if not, then it's definitely time to get a visit and make sure that there isn't anything uh, adverse going on in the mouth or further down in the uh, in the digestive tract. I had mentioned earlier that we uh, that we did four cruciate sur- uh, that I did four cruciate surgeries already this week, and the the interesting thing is is it's not the only orthopedic procedure that I've done. I want to give kudos to the uh, Lucas County Dog Warden because they they have really are doing since they've hired uh, Dr. Cindy Thornton and uh, Julie Lyle, the dog warden, and they've upgraded the quality of the care that is going on down there dramatically. We had the opportunity today to fix a broken leg on a dog that came in to the the dog warden for reasons of which I'm not aware but it had a broken femur. That's your thigh bone. You know, rather than just euthanize this dog, and it is a wonderful dog, it's going to be a great pet for somebody. They, they transfer it over to us. That's not something that's within the scope of the dog warden surgical uh, suite. Allowed us to uh, to fix it. It went great. I got to do what's called an IM pin, pinning. We put a, a stainless steel pin into the marrow cavity uh, of that femur and uh, got a great reduction of the of the fracture. And I fully expect the dog to, uh, to recover and do really well. Cool thing is, is that our town, Sylvania, uh, the photographer from that uh, online website came and took some pictures of us uh, performing the surgery. It'll be interesting to see what they put on the uh, our town, Sylvania with that. And we're hoping to be able to get uh, some of those uh, some of those uh, pictures that were uh, that were published so that we can put them on our website as well. It's always nice to do that. So kudos to the uh, Lucas County Dog Warden for really uh, t- taking that office from what was an embarrassment and and the laughing stock of the country to a really quality uh, facility that is doing, I think, an excellent job for uh, Lucas County. And I, I honestly feel where I never felt like I was getting my money's worth when I paid for my dog license. I honestly feel like I'm getting my money's worth at this point. And that's all any of us can ever ask uh, is that you get a dollar's worth for a dollar charged. And uh, I feel like we're getting that dollar for sure. We talked a little bit about diet if you're going to do an elimination because you think maybe there's a food allergy. And I mentioned that you got to stop biscuits. Well, you know, one of the things that you ought to be aware of is the calorie density that many of these these treats have. And we've got a really nice handout that we'd be happy to provide for anybody that wants to stop in. If you just stop in and say, Could I have a calorie count sheet for the treats. But if I pick out just a couple of examples here, I think you're going to be pretty amazed. Greenies, which are a pretty popular consumable treat for dogs and one that I think is a great treat. I have no problem. A regular sized greenie has 90 calories in it. Uh, yeah, it may be good for the teeth, and but let's not do uh, too many of those at any given time. A jumbo is jumbo in calories, 270 calories. The world record in my mind for, for calories in a treat goes to beg and choose large. All right, so a large bag and chew has 672 calories in it. You're talking about the equivalent of of two cups of regular dog food. And oh my gosh, there's here's on this list is yet another one, a busy bone. People I know people are buying busy bones. A large busy bone, 
732 calories. You say, why is my dog gaining weight? I'm only giving him one treat a day. You know, we better ask the next question. What the heck is that treat? So what are things out there that you can give that are kind of low in calories? Well, something, a treat that is really a great treat from the standpoint that you get benefits both in the mouth and the teeth, as well as a reward is prescription diet TD. These big nuggets uh, have 19 calories each in them. In In a regular milk bone, it has about 20 calories in it. So they're equivalent to a a regular milk. Regular milk bone doesn't give you much for uh, of dental care in spite of what they'd like you to believe. But a large milk bone has 115 calories. So that's calorie dense. That's uh, that's like, you know, uh, eating Hostess cupcakes or Twink isn't benign. We all know what that can uh, that can uh, do to us. Everything wasn't orthopedics this week, um, but we had a case this week of a uh, a dog, Great Dane, actually, about a year old that was in for his boosters. And as a puppy growing up, we never heard a heart murmur. And all of a sudden, we're hearing a heart murmur in this dog. What we wanted to do is recommend that this client go see a, a, a veterinary cardiologist. Veterinary cardiology is uh, is really a very specialized art, and it is something that uh, when you're doing an echocardiogram of the heart and you're using color flow Doppler, which these uh, cardiologists do, there's a lot of experience that goes into be a- being able to evaluate that heart that might be moving at 120 to 150 beats per minute. So you got to be able to look quick. You got to know what you're looking for. You got to be able to do the precise measurements, and so we. We recommend uh, a cardiologist that uh, uh, doesn't come to the Toledo area. We're working on trying to get him to, but he's already a pretty busy guy. He and his associate, but it's uh, it's Dr. Brown and Dr. Desena, and they have a they they see clients in Ann Arbor once uh, once a week. Most of the time, they're up in Novi, which is up north of Detroit, and then they're also up in Rochester Hills, but that's really far north. So one of those two, and that's where we normally send people. We can also send them to see Dr. Aiken, who's actually actually a Sylvania person, and she uh, uh, graduated from Northview High School. She uh, works at Michigan Veterinary Specialists uh, up in Southfield, Michigan. So we got to send you out of the area to go to go do this. But if we diagnose a murmur in a dog that's not clinical with heart disease, uh, the most important thing to get is that echocardiogram, far more important than an electrocardiogram, far more important than chest x-rays. So this Greyhound is heading, uh, this, excuse me, Great Dane is heading up to see Dr. Brown, and we're not doing anything think further than making them their referral. There are some practices in the area that say that they can do hard echoes. I would discourage you from having that service provided by anybody other than a board certified cardiac specialist. And there are not many of them in the country. We're blessed to have three or four in the immediate area between uh, Southfield and Novi and Ann Arbor. So there's probably only about 300 in the entire country. So we've got more than our fair share and they're busy. My producer and I were just talking about, boy, it sounds like cardiology might be a place to go and especially to get into. And and I would say, yeah, I think there's uh, certainly a lot of job opportunities out there. But uh, what you need to understand is the investment in time that a veterinary cardiologist puts in. So they've started with their undergraduate degree, and that's four years probably in most cases. Then they have veterinary school for four years. Then they do a year's internship. And after that, they do a three or a four year cardiac residence where all they do is that. Then they have to take their boards and become uh, board certified uh, before they, you know, they really can hang their shingle out. And so they've invested an awful lot of time to get to get to that point. And there are a limited number of spaces in uh, in cardiology residencies. That it's not like that. Uh, there's uh, spaces that go wanting. There may only be 20 new cardiologists every year nationwide. Well, that's not an awful lot. That's the kind of investment that these these specialists have to make. And the same is true with the orthopods and the internal medicine guys and the veterinary ophthalmologists, they all have to put in that kind of time. So people wonder sometimes, how come it's so expensive to go see the specialist? There you go. That's at least one of the reasons. Plus, they've got 
tons and tons of high-level equipment that plays a role as well. When you need them, you need them, but uh, Sylvania Vet can do a lot of the things that the average practice can't do. So we try to position ourselves between that high-level specialty practice and we try and the, and the general medical practice. And uh, in many cases, because of our overnight care and everything, we're able to provide that uh, support that the animal needs to recover from whatever has been done. We've actually had animals referred back down to us from the uh, specialty clinic to provide the, the overnight care and the ongoing care because we can do it less expensive than they can do at the specialty clinic. Ran across an interesting article in one of our journals, and uh, it involves uh, a really unusual flood problem. That's uh, and it's really not a problem; it's just a blood finding that's seen in only Cavalier King Charles Spaniels. And in Cavalier King Charles Spaniels, if you do a uh, about half these dogs have what are known as macroplatelets. So platelets are are little fragments of uh, of cells that are the first line of defense in a cut. So when a when a when a wound starts to bleed platelets go and they kind of block it up just like uh, the mashed potatoes do your drain when you try to flush them down <laughs> flush them down when you're washing the uh, the Thanksgiving or Christmas uh, mashed potato pan and so it plugs up the it plugs up the wound and then the clotting factors can go in and start stopping things but what happens is is that we we see a Cavalier King Charles Spaniel their platelet count on a complete blood count is really low and we say ooh that's trouble but then we look at a slide and we look and we see oh there's platelets there but they're monsters and so these macro platelets will do the same work as the micro platelets or the regular platelets so it's nothing to worry about it's not a disease process but it's a, it, you need to know about it so if you have a cavalier king charles spaniel keep that in mind if uh, if somebody says gosh we think your dog may have a disease of their of their platelets um, so we're getting down towards the end here so i want to remind you of some things uh, we have an adoptathon coming up this sunday at sylvania vet from 12 to 3 area rescues are going to be there. We want you to come in. Feel free to uh, shop and look at the, them and hopefully you'll find an animal that will be a forever pet for you. On the 19th, uh, we're having a, a blood drive at Sylvania Vet and certainly you're welcome to call and sign up and get a time to come in and donate blood for the American Red Cross. This is one of our community outreach things that we do about three times a year. And then I have some uh, Northview Athletic shirts. I help sponsor an event for the uh, uh, Northview Athletic Boosters and I have uh, two extra large and six large t-shirts uh, that are really nice that any Northview uh, parent or Northview student wants to stop in first come first serve be happy to give you those and then uh, every Sunday at three o'clock Zumba class is at uh, at Sylvania Vet give us a call you'll learn some details 419-885-4421 check out Sylvania Vet on the web at www.sylvaniavet.com I want to thank Elanco I want to thank Sylvania Vet and I want to thank Esplan Medical for sponsoring uh, today's show. Remember, there's only one greatest pet, and it lives in your home. You have been listening to Pet Sylvania with Dr. Bob Esplin on WSYLradio.com. Pet Sylvania is brought to you by Elanco, maker of Trifexis and Comfortis. Tune in every Saturday at 10 a.m. as Dr. Bob explains the latest in veterinary care and answers your questions. You can email your pet questions to requests at wsylradio.com and Dr. Bob will answer them on a future show.